Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's been a while since I made a video. I've uh, been doing a lot of traveling, things of that nature, and I am gonna get to the Moody Blues uh, discography coming up. I know I said that will be the next discography that I do, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm still working on some kinks, um, you know, reworking things. I've been going back and listening to some of their material to try to get, um, you know, the, the proper ranking. Um, of course, you know, things can change, anything can change. But uh, what I wanted to do here is I wanted to do a video. I went back to England recently and I went to London. Uh, last time I visited Cambridge and all the Pink Floyd sites in Cambridge, and I might do a video later with that, but I wanted to share this one because this one was a bucket list trip for me. I went to London um, and I saw Battersea Power Station, which is the, if you're a Pink Floyd fan, the album cover of Animals. I also saw Abbey Road and a lot of other of the London tourist attractions, um, but we're concentrating mostly on um, Battersea and, Pow and, and uh, Abbey Road in this video just because it's a Pink Floyd exclusive. Can only get it here that I visited Abbey Road and, uh, and Battersea Power Station. But I just wanted to kind of tell you guys about what happened. So my wife and I get to London and we take a um, it's like a little, I think they call it the Clipper, the Thames Clipper a boat that goes down the River Thames. And um, we went past a lot of the, you know, the London sites. You're talking about Houses of Parliament, talking about the London Eye, things of that nature. Uh, even went under London Bridge, and I can assure you that it is not falling down. It is still intact. So... We travel through there and we come up on Battersea Power Station, which is one of the places that I've always wanted to visit ever since I became enamored with Pink Floyd and Animals, the album. That's my favorite Pink Floyd album. It was very shocking to come across and see what I'd always imagined or what I'd always seen in photos or on the album cover itself. Uh, it's a huge building. And um, so I've, I've got a couple of pictures I'll show you of me at Battersea Power Station. But yeah, this one was, it was such a remarkable trip because we got to see all these things. Like I said, uh, we went to Abbey Road. I'll, I'll put a picture of Abbey Road. Me crossing the zebra crossing, as they call it, at uh, Abbey Road. Um, also went into Abbey Road Studios, and I got a picture of that as well here. Uh, we've got Dark Side of the Moon, you got the Beatles, things of that nature. Uh, big time promoting Pink Floyd and the Beatles at Abbey Road. Uh, we also went back to Grant Chester Meadows in Cambridge, and uh, we, my wife and I got we, we decided we were going to be clever, and when we were crossing over Grant Chester Meadows, we got stuck in the mud. It was just like mud up to our ankles, so we just ruined our shoes. Uh, but it was an adventure. But yeah, uh, Battersea Power Station is opening pretty soon, I, I believe to the public. They're, they're turning it into some flats and some shops and things of that nature. But it was a beautiful day when we were out there. I was kind of humming, you know, pigs, <laughs> humming dogs, you know, all of the uh, the um, songs from Animals. You know, I'm just so enamored with that album. But it was such a wonderful experience to to be at a place that I always wanted to be at and just get to experience um, being at the same place that Pink Floyd once stood and, and the pig goes up and you know to be in that area it's just hard to explain I guess if you if you're a Pink Floyd fan or if you're a fan of any band it's like crossing Abbey Road you know and you're like man you know 
John and Ringo and Paul and um, George. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, they cross this, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things, you know, it's, it holds significance, even though millions of people have crossed that road and do all the time. It's still, you know, you, you feel like you're intertwined in that piece of history. You're part of that for some reason. And so that's how I felt at Battersea Power Station and, and Abbey Road as well. Wonderful. I would recommend it to anyone. If you go to England, if you go to London, Visit Battersea, visit Abbey Road. Abbey Road's got a great studio. I got this shirt from Abbey Road. So, uh, yeah. So that was my trip to London. Just a little little um, dive into what we did there. And like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the pictures. Now, we're gonna move on and do something a little bit different. Um, inspired by this, I wanted to, I have done the Pink Floyd album rankings before um, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a list of my favorite Pink Floyd songs not not of all time I might do that at some other time but per album and just kind of go over that just to, to give you guys a little bit of what I what my favorite choices are per album I'd like to know what your favorite choices are uh, of each Pink Floyd album so the first one we're going to talk about is Piper at the Gates of Dawn, the original album. Um, I, I like several songs off this album. It's not a very highly ranked album, in, in my opinion, just because I'm, you know, I'm more into Rick and Nick and Dave and Roger. But um, my favorite song off the Piper at the Gates of Dawn album is Interstellar Overdrive. I love this song. I love the experimentation of the song. I like the longer songs that Pink Floyd uh, perform. So this one has a lot of psychedelia in it. It's very 60s, uh, but it's got a breakdown in the middle that's just very psychedelic. I really enjoy that. And then of course it comes back in with the motif, you know, the, the original rhythm pattern. Um, but yeah, this song is an instrumental all the way through. No, no vocals, anything of that nature but it to me is almost like the introduction to Pink Floyd. Um, and I would have loved to have seen it played live, but nevertheless, Interstellar Overdrive, my favorite from Piper to Gates of Dawn. Now moving on to Saucer Full of Secrets, the sophomore effort, uh, Sid Barrett's last album with Pink Floyd. But my favorite song off there, and I got several, like I said, I love all the songs. Um, I love Seesaw, I love, um, Set the Controls. Um, um, Jug Band Blues is okay, I suppose. It's a little sad, but um, but my favorite song off this album is Remember a Day. Uh, Rick Wright penned this one. Uh, it's got a lot of change-ups in the song. Uh, piano. It's just got all these elements of psychedelia in it as well, but it's it's very mellow, but it's also very upbeat. Uh, it's quite a really good package of complexity in a tiny little pop song. And that's why I love it so much. And I love Rick, Rick Wright's vocals as well on this one. So it's Remember a Day, Saucer Full of Secrets. Uh, the next one's going to be the soundtrack to More. I, I watched the movie More. It's okay. Uh, it does stick with me a bit, but it's it's not as good as the other one later on down the line, uh, Obscured by Clouds, La Vallée, uh, but, or La Vallée, however they want to pronounce it. But uh, my favorite song off the Moore album is Cymbaline. I love the, it's almost like, it's got that 60s production, of course, but it's it's like I love the minimalistic sound of it. And it's just sort of like this little bouncy but dark, foreboding type song. Very 60s. I love Dave Gilmore's vocals on this one. Um, it's almost like a smooth but rugged sound with Gilmore on this one. And this one, like I said, is very minimalistic sounding uh, with a very... Uh, sort of uplifting course that contrasts with the 
minor sounding chords of the um, verses and the dark foreboding uh, atmosphere of the verses. Uh, next one is going to be Um A Gum. I'm going to give you two off this one just because it's a live album and a studio album. My favorite live song off this one is Careful With That Axe Eugene. Although I do... Well, it's almost like a tie between this version of Careful With That Axe Eugene and the Live At Pompeii version. But again, Live At Pompeii is not really an album album. So this one is very haunting slowed down from the original song uh, extremely eerie and I really like this one careful with that Eugene uh, the studio version is going to be the narrow way I like David Gilmore's offering here parts one parts two parts three especially part three it sounds more like a Pink Floyd song than any of the songs off this album in my opinion I do enjoy Grant Chester Meadows by Roger Waters as well but I have to prefer the narrow way on this one. I love it, how it's divided into sections and it does build and it does climax in the third part of the song. So I really enjoy that one. Moving on is Adam Hart Mother and my favorite song off of it is the Adam Hart Mother Suite. Uh, I think this is one, a masterpiece song. It's one of the greatest songs of all time uh, by Pink Floyd. Uh, I love the collaboration they did with Ron Geeson in this. I think he is a mad genius. And the song is haunting. It's weird. It almost sounds like a, a Western in some parts. Um, it reminds me of something you might hear from like a spaghetti Western in some parts. But then it's got a lot of coral in it. Um, it's got brass, you know, it's got guitar, it's got everything. It's just like they throw everything at you with this song. And it's 20-something minutes long, which is bliss to me, as long as it changes. I, I don't like long songs that remain the same. I like lots of changes in a long song. I, I like to go on a journey, and that's what Adam Hart Mother is. Speaking of a journey, the next album, Metal, my favorite song off this one, Echoes. Of course. I mean, Echoes is the epic Pink Floyd piece to me. It is, it is, if I was going to have someone listen to Pink Floyd, of course I'd start them with something, you know, gentle, like comfortably numb or something like that. But I'm talking about, if I want to say this is the Pink Floyd experience, it's going to be Echoes. That's what I'm going to do. You're going to hear that. The beginning of it is just transcendent. The whole song is, it goes, uh, takes you on a journey again, beauty into darkness, into inspiring, uplifting, you know, at the end. The guitar parts are great. It's got a funky part in it, sort of like the Adam Hart Mother Suite does. Uh, it is a companion piece to Adam Hart Mother to me. So that's Echoes. Next is going to be Dark Side of the Moon, and my favorite song off this is Time. I love this song. I think it's a perfect song. The intro may be a little too long, but you know, that's that depends on your taste. But once the song kicks in, great lyrics, um, very, um, the lyrics to me are almost introspective and uh, just brilliantly written. The guitar parts, uh, as far as the solos, the the beat, the rhythm, I mean, everything, everything in this song. I wonder it's on the radio a lot. It's a perfect song. Time, Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, next is going to be uh, Wish You Were Here. And my favorite song off this one is probably going to be a little bit different than most people's. Most people's going to pick Shine On or Wish You Were Here. I'm going to pick Shine On, but I'm going to pick the second part, which is part six through nine. The last song off the Wish You Were Here album. I love the way this song comes in. It is so intense, and then it builds up. I love how they use uh, the different instrumentations after, you know, during the coda of the song, when the song is going out. Rick Wright just has a field day with different instruments, and it is just a brilliant piece of music, and I highly recommend you go back and listen to that. If you listen, if you listen to the first part of Shine On, always listen to that last song off the Wish You Were Here. Great. Fantastic. Um, next is Animals, my favorite album, and my favorite album off that, uh, favorite song, rather, off that album is 
dogs. Now, I do love pigs. I do love sheep. I love every song off this album. But if I had to pick one, it's going to be dogs. Dogs is brilliant. Great, I mean, fantastic uh, breakdown of the way that people are in the lyrics that Roger Waters breaks it down. I loved the solos, yes, plural, in the song. I love the feel of the song, the atmosphere of the song. I love at the end, the climax of the song. It is just a perfect, brilliant song to me and off a perfect, brilliant album dogs from animals next is going to be the wall although i love many songs off the wall the one that still touches me is comfortably numb it's the perfect combination of roger and dave i just don't think you can get any better of a, a combination between roger and dave than comfortably numb it is the quintessential pink floyd song it, it would be the song that i would start anyone off listening to pink floyd um, the solo is just otherworldly, beautiful, one of the greatest, if not the greatest solo of all time. Next is the final cut, and my favorite song is the final cut. I do like Not Now, John. I do like Possible Past. So I do like The Hero's Return, but my favorite is the final cut. I love, it's almost like a, a companion piece to Comfortably Numb to me. The solo sounds a, a bit similar. Roger sounds distraught in this one. Uh, it is probably the most depressing album by Pink Floyd and the most depressing song by Pink Floyd, probably. Um, but it's just so brilliant. I just love it. The final cut from the final cut. Next is Momentary Lapse of Reason. My favorite song off that is Yet Another Movie. This song don't get a lot of popularity. People like Learning to Fly. They like uh, On the Turning Away. They like Sorrow, which I love. You know, I love Sorrow. I love One Slip, you know, those songs like that. Um, but but yet another movie, again, it's that atmosphere. It's that darkness that Pink Floyd can give, but yet with a little light. I love the way Gilmore sings in this. I love the guitar solo. I love the overall feel of this song. It's just a brilliant song. A lot of people say, well, it's, it's too sludgy, you know, it's slumbering along. Yeah, but, I mean, it's Pink Floyd, and they're going to be slow a lot, and, you know, but it's just, it's a brilliant, it's the most Pink Floyd sounding song off a, a momentary lapse of reason, in my opinion. So next is, I'm moving on to The Division Bell. Love this album. I saw the cover of The Division Bell. I was at Ely. I was at the Ely Cathedral. I went out into the field where Pink Floyd filmed uh, High Hopes, the video, and where they took the photo of the cover for the division bell. Saw that, loved it. Uh, also visited Dave, Dave Gilmore's house as well down, down the way in Cambridge, Grant Chester Meadows. Um, but my favorite song off this album is, and I love a lot of songs off this album, it's a very underrated album, but it's gonna be High Hopes. That song to me is a very emotional song. It brings out a lot in me every time I hear it. I just love this song. I wish that would have been the ending of Pink Floyd to end on that high note of high hopes. You know, I know they created, an, you know, the Endless River, which I appreciate, but the the last song on the Pink Floyd catalog should have been this one. This is the way you go out. This is the epic song to go out, high hopes. And finally, we come to the Endless River. Again, I appreciated the effort of The Endless River. If you listen to it as one whole piece or four separate pieces, yeah, I can dig that. Uh, I don't like the little clips of songs here and there. It don't kind of flow as well. But, you know, it is what it is, and I enjoy it. Uh, my favorite off this is I love the song Some when it goes into Skins. I love that. So Some and Skins when it goes into that. That is my favorite part of that album. I guess I have to describe it as parts instead of songs, but that's my favorite part of that album. And it's very haunting. It brings back a lot of the, um, the sound of Pink Floyd, like in the Umagama days. So I really enjoy that. But anyways, that's it. That's my Pink Floyd video for today. Maybe we'll get more in depth uh, in Pink Floyd later. But that's it. Thank you guys for watching. 
and you guys take care.